This is Poorly Thought Through Rugby. I'm Sam Eichen. What a big week we've had, and it looks like we've got a whole another one ahead of us. But let's start with round 12. Well, it's been called the round that put Australia back on the map. Of the four games played, Australian teams won two. That's 50%, I guess. It's a pass mark, which is pretty good, you know, for us. I don't want to overdo this next bit, but every now and then, sports fans get to see the making of history. Events that are so significant, they change the sporting landscape. Events that will be talked about for years. Things like Australia 2 taking out the America's Cup. Cadell Evans winning the Tour de France. Qualifying for the 2006 Soccer World Cup. The Wallabies lifting the Rugby World Cup in 1991 and in 1999. And the Rebels beating the Crusaders at Amy Park on Saturday. Well, maybe, maybe that's not right up there, but it was a pretty awesome game. This is a team that's been written off by most commentators, including us. The seven-time Super Rugby champions, however, just couldn't get past them. And if every success story needs a hero, this one had Sterling Mortlock. Most people thought he'd reached his Roger Murtar age. Boy, I'm a bit too old for this But Mortlock was more like Leonidas from 300. Remember this. Spencer again. Intercepted. Mortlock. They are going to make hard work of it. Rockathoko's chasing, but he can give up. Mortlock gets the first try. So that's two awesome games on the trot for the Rebels. It's almost as though they've been weighed down by some sort of anchor, which has somehow been suddenly and unexpectedly removed. The second piece of awesomeness from round 12 was the Queensland Reds finally hitting their stride. After a great start, it looked like they were destined for another loss. Almost as disappointing as last year's season of the block. Try to Liam Messam. Well, they opened them up. Two tries in the matter of minutes. There's been a lot of speculation about what won the game for the Reds here. Could have been the luck of keeping Morahan on the field after he upended Sonny Bill Williams. Pretty lucky we didn't get the number. <laughs> that it was going to be yellow. In his defence, Morahan did try to apologise. Sonny Bill, however, diplomatically refused the apology. Morahan went on to save two tries. You could call that lucky, I guess. Some say it was Will Genia's amazing 60 metre try. Simmons is on the left. Simmons, he won't need him. Will Genia, absolutely brilliant. Man is a genius. It could have been Liam Gill's inspired performance. Went straight for the ball. But here at the PTT office, we think it was this very moment right here. Take the three. No, I've got to take the three. Yeah. When James Horwell evoked the old gods and the new and shunned a kick at goal. Oh, he's not going. He's going to go for touch. Big call. To put Ben Lucas over in the corner. Lucas! Ben Lucas! Try to the Reds! It's a matter of science, you see. Seven points will always be more than three. That's the way the world works. It's the way God intended. Across the ditch, we had a great example of how it's not done. Our favourite Kiwi team, the Highlanders, had one last chance at victory. They needed seven points for the win, and there was almost no time left. Not sure that was the right move, and that was a knock-on, so that ruins it totally. Ah, Rutledge. What have you done? That's not a tap and go, that's a kamikaze mission. It's like a starving man eating $100 bills instead of using them to buy food. The Hurricane's taking out that game by six points. Back home, the poor old Waratahs led for most of the game against the Bulls, and they pulled off some awesomeness too. Bulls paying too much attention and allowing Rob Horn to go through untouched. But destined to learn nothing from history, they took shots at goal at every given opportunity, leaving the Bulls close enough to close the game out with a, a wait for it. In fact, have scored. What a try. Try. In South Africa, the force got pumped by the Sharks. The less we say about that game, the better. And finally, the Storms and the Cheetahs played out a frustratingly close game. 
So frustrating, in fact, almost every player on the field decided it was time to punch on at about three-quarter time. Although I couldn't actually see any actual punches thrown. There was a lot of jersey pulling, a lot of pushing and shoving, but the referee didn't see anything either. Clearly that is unacceptable. We don't really know what happened, eh? The only guy on the pitch who wasn't involved in the melee was sent off for something else. I'd love to feel sorry for him, but unfortunately, I don't want to. The big news this weekend is Quade Cooper's long-awaited return to playing rugby. I'll play as much as I can and you know, hopefully just you know, get out there and, you know, and play some good footy. You know, it's not about how long I can play, it's about you know, getting out there and you know, strapping the boots on. And... We just hope it's a very short amount of time if he still has his World Cup yips. And that's poorly thought through for this week. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, he's hoping this weekend's games are decided the way God intended, especially if you're heading down to a third tier match. Remember to use the hashtag third tier and tweet about it. Remember, if you come, they will build it. I'm Sam Iken. I'm a peanut butter fanatic and a chocolate fanatic as well, so I haven't really given up too much.